morning and it's a wednesday and we are on a new lesson and it's about space law and actually there are several parts for this lesson but today we will just focus on the definition of space law and its development now i'm happy to share this because it's actually my report in my llm class because i'm taking my master's degree um, in, in san sebastian recoletos but it's done here in cebu because it's in consortium with um, the university of cebu school of law i'm so happy about my teachers because they're so understanding especially that we're having our classes on a weekend and all of us are practitioners i mean the students and we learn so much and I realized that there are so many things we do not know even if we went to law school for four years. Now, so much about that. Space is defined according to the dictionary that it's a continuous area. It has depth, height, and it has width. And it is unoccupied. It's vacant. That's the usual definition of space, but we know in physics that even if it's space, it is air, and air is a ma matter, and it, and it occupies space, so it's not necessarily vacant. Now, there are several proposals on the definition of space because space could not be measured accurately. Does it, uh, is it a boundary? Is it about the altitude at which gravity ceases? I know, I know it's um, um, basically science. Now, is it the airspace? Also, it is about um, for navigational purposes, or w is it about the altitude or the height from the ground to the airspace in which human still has control, or anywhere where it, the altitude that guarantees the security of states in which it's still um, measured or it can still be reached by its cannons during that time in the olden times. Now. Is it about um, the functionality for navigation again, like we're used by ships uh, when they navigate the Earth? Now, why is it why is it necessary to define um, space? Actually, it goes also to the to the need of having a legal framework because of these five issues or areas in which space is something critical the militarization of space, the privatization and commercial space activities. Can the moon be occupied? Can anyone, a private individual, can just go to space and occupy maybe an asteroid, an area of an asteroid, and it is considered his territory or his ownership? Exploitation of resources. What about the resources from the moon, from the asteroid, from Mars even, that when um, the astro uh, astronauts would take um, a piece of rock there. Will it be considered as a common um, ownership of mankind? Now, is what about failure of launches? What if what's going to be the liability of launching states? Failure of launches could be, be mean the tragedy when a space rocket is launched and something went wrong, and the concerns of developing uh, states or countries like the Philippines. Actually, just recently, our Philippine Space Act has been um, enacted and approved by the president. Now, what is space law? It is a body of law which governs space-related activities. Space-related activities could be um, launching uh, satellites, sending astronauts or scientists there, researchers, and it comprises a variety of international agreements and later you will know the development of um, space law and also the institutions that is uh, that are involved here and it is often associated with rules principles and standards of international law given that um, international law is more of consensual and if it has obtained a status of state practice and then that could also be compulsory to other non-signatory uh, states. I'm referring to treaties. Now, the development of state, uh, space law is based on these three periods or phases. Now, space law was just a concept before, in 1910 to 1957. 
Then there was a clarification. There was a move during that time in phase two in the 1950s and 60s that there is a need to clarify and adopt basic applicable laws on space exploration because during this time, actually, it was the space race between the United States of America and the Soviet Union. I'm referring to the USSR. And now, space uh, phase three would be on the development of various space activities. And you know, Elon Musk is a part of phase three because it's part of the 21st century. And it's a way, and one thing also, is the commercialization of space flights. Now, as I was saying a while ago, um, space law was just a concept in 1910, and it was mentioned in a uh, journal, in, a, uh, in an article in Paris, France, and it was this person, Emile, he said that um, there's a need for a law beyond the breathable air and the possible problems of ownership has been um, foreseen during that time. Now, space law is um, also mentioned in aviation and there's uh, a Russian uh, min uh, ministry that, uh, minister, he said that there was an upper limit to state sovereignty. Actually, space law is very critical and contested. It's because of the political and the legal concerns like it's more of the state sovereignty and state power because he who occupies space or who explores and is um, an expert of space has an edge among other countries right so we we know that for a fact now phase two it's when the u.s and the ussr were battling against the their power and they're extending from the earth to outer space and it was actually triggered by the launching of Sputnik 1 in 1957 by the USSR. And during that time, there was already a strong move to have an international space policy. So the policy that will be observed by states, but it is non-binding actually during that time unless there was a treaty or there is state practice. Now, phase three, um, or phase two, I mean, is a, is related actually to nuclear test ban um, treaty because during this time, is there was a question whether nuclear tests could be done in airspace, and the development of space law and nuclear um, nuclear disarmament is actually uh, um, is actually related to each other. So during this time. It is when the U.S., the USSR, and the U.N. or the United Nations were trying to push to have a standard space law that will be observed and is binding among states. Now, I hope you learned something from this and you will look forward to next, uh, next lesson because it's more of space law institutions and treaties because we're just dealing with the introduction. So I will give you the macro level of space law. Thank you so much again for those who liked and followed our Facebook page. And I know it's increasing daily because I get prompted, but because of my busy schedule, I could not check on the specific statistics. Now, I also thank those who subscribe to our channel, and I think it's almost 1,500 in YouTube. Thank you so much, and I hope you will share it to others who could relate and who you think would be interested in going to law school and not just going to law school but to those who want to learn the law in its simple um, way and also our website which is an ongoing ongoing um, work thank you thank you so much for supporting us and i wish that you will or i hope that you will take our quiz tomorrow thank you thank you